Welcome to the real world. My name is Cameron, joined by Carson. Carson is here for episode 111. 111. 111. That's this right. Is, this is a big one. Uh, <laughs> it's one that we've uh, been wanting to do for a while. Tim Burton. Yeah, we like doing these director-driven, yeah. director-focused yeah. filmography videos. I haven't done one in a while. So, yeah, excited to jump into Tim Burton's Talking filmography. all about Tim Burton's movies. We're going to rank um, our favorites. And so uh, stick around. We're going to get started. Here we go. Thank you so much for joining us here on The Real World. Make sure you hit the like button, hit subscribe, hit the bell so you get notified of all our videos. Today we're talking about Tim Burton. And uh, it's one of those directors that we both like. We've just never done a podcast on him, so we're glad we got to do it this weekend. Obviously, Beetlejuice. Beetlejuice is in theaters. That's right. So uh, we got our reaction to that on the channel right now. A spoiler review is on the channel. We also did a commentary for the original Beetlejuice movie, which was a lot of fun. So... Now we're going to break down Tim Burton. Um, we're going to talk about this filmmaker. Um, he's a madman. He's, he's a madman. He's, he's, it's funny. We're, we, we, we have on uh, some behind-the-scenes clips from 1989's Batman. Correct. And I believe it's the gentleman who plays Commissioner Gordon. Right, Pat, was Pat talking, Hingle. Yes, yeah. he was talking about how Tim Burton, he's not earth-minded. <laughs> 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 Most people think of things... On an earth level, yes, we're earth yes, beings. Right, right. Not Tim Burton. Tim Burton, mm -hmm. his mind is always in the clouds. It's, always. It's in some other world. Yes, absolutely. Which uh, I think pretty aptly describes his style. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He has a very specific style. Uh, you can recognize a Burton movie instantly, I feel like, right. most of the time. But um, like all great directors who have visions, yeah. his best movies are always when he has to work hard to yeah. get that vision through. Right, right, right. We talk a lot about studio intervention and mm, how that can be a bad thing, sure. but when a director has to work hard and fight mm. to make their movie work, right, right. that's usually when their best work yes. is there. So you have to have a good you producer, agree. you have to yeah. have a good director, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. the whole team has to work together, and uh, that's why Iron Giant's the greatest movie of all time, but <laughs> we're going to talk about more of Tim Burton's movies. Yes, so he's a 66-year-old filmmaker. Um, he was born and raised in Burbank, California, right there yep. in the Hollywood kind of area. And uh, he's talked a lot about how that shaped him over his career and his life. Certainly. He started early days with uh, Disney. Yep. Um, with those old nine, old, the, the, the old nine men. Um, yes, there, the nine old men of nine old men Disney, of Disney Animation. And, uh, you know, came in to, to that whole kind of era and started making his own short films and eventually got his big break with Pee Wee's Big Adventure. That That's was right. His first That's right. film, and uh, you know that was I think 1984, mm -hmm. and so you know yeah, he, it was uh, interesting. He came into Disney at a really difficult mm -hmm. time for them. Right. It, was, it was kind of in the 80s. Yeah, transitional it was very difficult period. transitional yeah. period between mm -hmm. their golden age with mm -hmm. Cinderella and right. Sleeping Beauty and yep. the the Disney classics as we refer to yeah, them now. Sure, transitioning into the Renaissance, right, which right. everybody knows. Mm -hmm. Uh, so Tim Burton was working on movies like The Black Cauldron, yeah, you know, yeah. on kind of Fox and the Hound, right, you know, right. on kind of the the movies that fall in between the cracks yep, of those yep. two eras. Exactly. That there is quite a few hidden gems there. Oh, I agree completely. Yeah. So yeah, really interesting career, you know, um, and he's he's a huge fan of so many different things that we'll get into. But we're just going to basically talk about our top five favorites. Absolutely. Right now. Yeah. Uh, so I've created my list. Carson's created his list. Yeah, we discovered in rewatching Beetlejuice that. We like Tim Burton a lot, both mm -hmm. of us, but I think we like different things about him. Yeah. We like point. different kinds of movies that he does. Sure, sure. So, yeah, let's just jump right into it. You want me to start us with Go number ahead. five? Yes, give us your number five. My number five is a movie that, um, one of his films I hadn't seen until just this week, Okay, actually. Um, it's one of those movies that, for whatever reason, I never saw it, and it is Frankenweenie, the 2012 um, it's a great pick. fully stop-motion yep. film. Uh, also fully black and white, which I don't know of any other stop motion. full length film yeah. that's stop motion and that's black and white. Uh, I mean, of course, the of course, there are some kind. super old ones from the 30s and 40s that I'm sure exist, but well, short, short but, ones. But I'm talking yeah, feature length. Yeah, this feature length like films. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So I don't know if it's the only one that's ever been made. It's the only one I'm aware of. Mm -hmm. It's I think the only one I've seen. It's so, quite impressive. It is really impressive. I'll, of course, stop motion takes such a long time. Right. And it's based on I'm a short, thinking. a live action short like that Tim Burton also directed. Yes, I was just mentioning he made several short films while he was over at Disney, and one of them was called Frankenweenie. That's right. And, Shelley uh, Duvall. Shelley Duvall's in Which it. Is terrific. Um, uh, the terrific. Um, I think, is it Daniel Stearns from Home Alone? I believe so. As well as the dad. Right. Um, so, yeah, it's a really cool um, 
you know, short film to see that. I actually watched both on the same day right. because I hadn't seen either. So yeah. I watched the short film first, really liked it, and then I watched the stop motion film, which you know just expands on it and kind of fleshes it out. Definitely, all the yeah, more. definitely. Tim, a lot of Tim Burton's filmography harkens back to fifties and sixties mm-hmm. era cinema. Yes, yes. Um, this is kind of that Frankenstein monster movie exactly. throwback. Right. Uh, but there's also a couple fun nods to classic uh, Christmas animation, oh, okay. like yeah. Rudolph and right. stuff. Sure, yeah, because yeah, yeah. in the movie Santa Claus is Coming to Town, there's a character named Miser Burger Burgermeister, <laughs> right. and that character is in Frankenweenie. That's right. That's the neighbor. That's right. The it's neighbor. the exact yeah. same mo- like character model and name and everything. I didn't even pick up on that. That's so that's a great right. little nod and one of my favorite little things about the movie yeah it's a really great film it it of course also pays a lot of respect to ray harryhausen who of course is the stop motion maestro from back in the early days of Of cinema um so it calls back to a lot of his kind of monster movies you know has that kind of vibe to it big kaiju films you know godzilla It, it pays respect to all those things you know obviously universal horror films is all throughout this and it very much feels like a tim burton kid kind of movie yeah, because it's about a kid making yes, movies with his right. pet dog mm-hmm. in their mm-hmm. suburban neighborhood. Yep. He's kind of a weirdo. Yeah. So yeah, that's a terrific. It feels pick. very biographical. Definitely. Very personal to him. Yeah. And a lot of these films, in certain ways, he was talking about this on this behind the scenes stuff that we're watching now for Batman. Sure. Is that the director always needs some kind of personal connection. Right. You know, that's why he wanted to do Batman. He felt a personal connection definitely, to him. Definitely. And yeah. Frank and Weenie certainly has that in spades. Yeah, so. that's a terrific pick. That's one, actually, yeah. that didn't manage to make my list. Okay. My number five is Edward Scissorhands. Okay. Love Edward okay. Scissorhands. That's my number four. Uh, this is an, another early movie of his. Yeah. Uh, early for Johnny Depp as well. This is, I think, First the beginning of their together, collaboration, yeah. right. which they've kind of become known for. Oh, of course. Um, Edward Scissorhands is terrific. This this it movie is. it's very surrealist. Sure. It's very uh, uh, abstract. It's uh-huh. very um, it's very exaggerated. Right, right, right. But it, it manages to use its imagery and its to to really serve its story. Yes, yes. In I a way that I think is really cool. Mm-hmm. I love the the clash between the super colorful suburban plastic mm. world. Okay. And Edward Scissorhands is yeah. dingy, dark, sure, sure. creepy. Right, right. Yep. Um, it's just a great kind of uh, fish out of water story. Definitely. The practical yes. effects are fantastic. I mean, that, that I think kind of always up. goes yes. for Tim Burton's filmography. Yep. Um, but especially here in, in Edward Scissorhands, <laughs> I think, yeah, it's pretty pretty incredible what yeah. they've managed to pull off. I agree. It's one of those really quirky love stories, um, and it again harkens back to that Frankenstein esque kind of you know. Definitely, it's a lot like Frankenstein. Creature and that's yeah. created by this guy and goes on this journey, you know, For sure. to the sure. the suburbs. You know, it's a totally different world from right, what he's used right. to. Yeah. Uh, really great, really great film. I agree. Johnny Depp's great in Winona Ryder. His second time working with her after yes. Beetlejuice uh, did a great job. It's very funny, very sweet, sort of your typical goth to teen me, romance. To me, this is the best entry point for Burton's filmography. Okay, yeah, you I start can see with that. Edward Scissorhands, and you get a sure. great taste of everything that he's great yeah. at. Yeah, it's a good point. It's a good point. Very, very innovative, strange, quirky kind of a movie. Yeah. So, so with that in mind, what's your number four? Well, that was my number four. Oh, great, uh, Edward Scissorhands. So awesome. Perfect timing there. Right, so, why don't cool. you go ahead and give us your number four? Now. Okay, my number four is Batman Returns. Batman Returns. Let's hold off on this discussion. Okay. It's a little bit higher on my list. Okay. All right. So That's hold fine. your thoughts on that. So give us your number three. So my number three is Beetlejuice. Okay. Beetlejuice didn't manage to make my list. Okay. Beetlejuice to me is phenomenal. Okay. This was my first Burton f- movie, which I think is another one that you could go in with Beetlejuice and get it. Like, you understand what Burton does. You know what I mean? For sure. Because it's all there. The comedy, the quirky weirdness, the strange production design, the, you know, uh, just kind of fun characters, you know, very over-the-top characters. You know, Michael Keaton here is just knocking it out of the park. Every scene he's in, is, it's hilarious. It's... You kind of... You like... It's funny. He's one of those characters that you like, but he's kind of the bad guy almost in Definitely, the movie. Yeah, you know? yeah. He's, like, he's very much a chaotic, he's evil character. selfish. Yeah. You know, type of a character, but you really just like him. He's got, a, he's got a lot of charm mixed in with this kind of crudeness, you know? So I think that's great. The whole cast, I mean, Gina Davis, Alec Baldwin, you've got Catherine O'Hara, Jeffrey Jones. I mean, so many great actors involved in that. That's such a great pick, I think, because it's another one of those movies where Tim Burton really had to prove himself as a filmmaker. It's his second movie. His second movie, he's he's got something to prove. He's really pulling out out all the stops. He's doing everything he can. 
And uh, yeah, it's a really impressive movie. I agree. It's fun visuals, great comedy, memorable musical moments. Of course, Deo, Harry Belafonte's song is you know now forever associated with that film. Right, right. Um, but yeah, it's a great one. It's one I've revisited many times. Okay. And so that had to make my number three. What do you have at number three? My number three is Pee Wee's Big Adventure. Really? Okay, yeah. This one was close to making my list. It didn't yeah. quite make it. I've I only love, seen it once. I've only seen I it once, too. It I just saw it recently, and I love Pee Wee's Big Adventure. Really it, it is terrific. <laughs> it's a great road movie. It's a oh, great yeah. uh, kid adventure mm-hmm, movie. Mm-hmm. Um, Pee Wee, he, he just, he's so innocent. He's just, he's just such yes, a great, right, he has such great. a childlike mm-hmm. mentality uh-huh. that carries him through. And he has an arc. Oh, because sure. throughout the whole movie, it's really kind of a selfish quest mm, that he's on right, right. to reclaim his bike that mm-hmm. he believes has been stolen. And he, he kind of learns to, to care about other people, to share. There's to, that great end scene at the drive-in where all the characters come back. Yes, you know, yes. And he's giving them all snacks. It's and terrific. Stuff, and yeah. It's a really good moment. It's, it is such a great screenplay. The script yeah, oh, is yeah. just so strong. I agree. It's, it's so really tight well. and clean. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's another one where the visuals are just fantastic, yeah. very vibrant. Right. It's a very kind of fifties pulp yeah. Yeah. kind of reality uh-huh. that it, that they live in. Right. Where Pee Wee, he is an adult, but he kind of just acts like a kid. <laughs> he has his own house, but he like. Well, they even call him boy, like the cops. And yeah, like, yeah, right. Boy, save the right, hero, exactly. You know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And everyone just goes along with yeah, it. Everyone yeah, is no just, they just accept right. that this is just who Pee Wee is, and he's great, and we yeah, all love him. Exactly. And yeah, it's just terrific. Uh, Pee Wee's Big Adventure, when I watched it, I just couldn't stop grinning the whole movie, yeah. because it just exudes such a positive energy, beginning to end. Yeah. Yeah, Pee Wee's Big Adventure is a big one for me. It is a lot of fun. We need to get the Blu-ray. Definitely. It's on Blu-ray. Yeah. We need to buy it. Definitely. So we have it. Um... All right, moving on to my number two. It's one that you've already mentioned, Batman Returns. Batman Returns. To me, this, uh, every time I watch it, I feel like I like it more. On this most recent rewatch, I gave it five stars. I think it's one of the best Batman movies of all time. I I, I, mean, I completely agree. <laughs> it's incredible. It's terrific. How great this movie is. It's so Burton, yet it fits totally in with the Batman mythos. Like, it feels sure. like the perfect marriage of a character and a director right. with a vision for the character. Gotham City. Mm-hmm. In the winter, have yep. we ever seen it in the winter since then? Well, since we have seen it quite a few times in animation, animation, and in other but I'm places, about it in a live action film. No, I don't think no, we've no, ever no. seen. I mean, well, the opening scene of uh, Dawn of Justice is in this winter. That's true. That's true. A little bit of snow there, but this is just like blanketed in snow, mm-hmm. Christmas decorations everywhere. Right, right. It's, my, it's one of my favorite Christmas movies. I watch sure, it every year. Sure, deals all with commercialism, <laughs> and it deals with all these different things. But it's so well written, and it's deceptively well written because mm-hmm. it's kind of. It's, it's got a lot of characters, yep. right? We've got Penguin, Catwoman, Max Shrek. That's right. Um, <laughs> you know, for the longest time, he was my least favorite part of the movie. Sure. Even though I, I, Christopher Walken's fantastic. Of course. Um, He's but, the emperor. But <laughs> for me, it was kind of like, why is that character there? And on this recent rewatch, I was like, okay, all three of these characters represent an element of Bruce Wayne. Exactly. Catwoman is the, the caped, vengeful crusader. Yep. You know, Penguin is this orphaned Mm -hmm. child. Mm -hmm. Uh, Matt Shrek is the billionaire philanthropist. Yep. So it's each character represents and reflects an element of Batman's persona. Definitely. And the way he plays off of each one of them is so interesting. All the performances are great. Michelle Pfeiffer, Danny DeVito, um, the makeup, you know, again, the production. His production design, I feel like, is something that really stands out in this film. Certainly. And... It's usually utilized very well to, to help tell the story, and here I think it's maybe better than anywhere else. Absolutely, I, I completely agree. Daniel Batman Alfred Returns. Score. Batman Returns have long been my favorite Batman movie for years, yeah. until we got Matt Reeves' The Batman, which sure. managed to surpass it for sure. me. But totally yeah, Batman film, Returns though. totally different. Yeah, right. um, Batman Returns is so distinct; it is so exclusive to Tim Burton. Mm-hmm. No one mm-hmm. else could have made that right. movie. Right. Um, the Penguin, Danny DeVito as Penguin, <laughs> to me is just genius yeah. casting I, I think it's, it's totally unique I think it's brilliant on the character yes it's you know unique I mean? and it's also like uh trend setting for the oh, character sure. from that point oh, on sure. Absolutely. no one's been quite as like gross and and creepy and mm-hmm. weird as mm-hmm. he has been then mm-hmm. but the look of penguin there yep. has kind of he's always been the short guy in the suit Same now with Batman. Yeah, catwoman catwoman for yeah. sure yeah she the, the yeah. trend set that character right for a long sure time. for sure yeah, and the, the, like you said, the villains being symbolic mm-hmm. of, of Batman's psyche right, is right. so crucial. And there's a great excerpt uh, that Tim Burton said about why Batman isn't in Batman Returns as much 
as yeah. people would like him to sure, be. Sure, sure. And it's because Batman is a loner. Yeah, he's an isolated character. And he doesn't yeah. want to be in the movie. No, exactly. He doesn't right. want to be the main character. Exactly. He wants to be left alone yes. to go brood, right, you know. right. There's that great shot of him, you know, Sitting the, in the, si- the signal <laughs> turns on and he's finally awake. He's <laughs> right. finally exciting. Exactly. Because he's, he's just waiting around doing nothing yeah. until mm-hmm. it's time for him to be Batman. Because that's who he really is. Yes, yes. Exactly. So, yeah, yeah. Definitely love Batman Returns. That's your, that's, you said that's your number two? Number two. Wow. That's high praise. Number two from 1992, the year I was born. <laughs> so there's another connection between it and the movie I like. Excellent, excellent. I love um, it. So you're number two now. You on that? My one? number two is Ed Wood. Oh, uh, yeah. See, I like Ed Wood, too. I love this Ed Wood. pretty high on my, uh, my list. This is another one I saw relatively recently. Mm. Ed Wood is a movie about a B-movie director mm. from the 1950s and 60s. Yeah. Um, who a real guy? Who's a real person mm-hmm. who wound up you know, dying penniless and alone somewhere right. in a gutter? And mm. this movie is just kind of about what what it takes to be a bad movie director, and what what kind of person does that? Yeah. What kind of person makes a movie like that? What's yeah. their mentality? Right. Plan Nine from Outer Space is kind of what it's really set right. around, right? Uh, which is a infamous B movie from the 50s. For sure, for sure. And uh, yeah, it's a really interesting It's an interesting because he's so enthusiastic. Exactly. It's played by Johnny Depp. Johnny Depp does a great he, job. Very unique role a, for him. Again, a very different role for him. Yeah. It's uh, he's very charismatic and he's very optimistic. Yeah. Yes. And the movie's all from his point of view. Yeah. So, even though these movies he's making are terrible. Yeah. And we can tell that they're terrible yeah. and it, it kind of adds to the the sense of humor that the yes. movie has. Yes. Um in the context of the movie, the one logical, sane person that's along for the ride for the whole time winds up kind of being like the villain. Yeah. So the person who's really? like, these movies are terrible. You yeah. people are all crazy. This, yeah. You're a bunch of weirdos. Right. She kind of becomes yeah. the antagonist True. from the perspective of the movie yeah, because right. it's all from Ed Wood's point of right. view. Right, right, exactly. So really cool. Great ensemble cast. Bella, Martin Bella, Landau. Yeah. Yeah. As Bela Lugosi. Bela Lugosi. I think he won Best Supporting Actor that year, and he well deserved. Well deserved. I mean, it's a terrific. It's a terrific performance. Yeah. It's a great balance of uh, dramatic seriousness mm-hmm. and comedy. Sure, sure. A really interesting balance there. I think that kind of goes for the whole movie, really. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, it's all in black and white. Yeah. Which is terrific. Yeah. Which is rare. And, I mean, this uh, movie's made in the nineties. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah. That's pretty cool that he was able it's, to do it, that. It's not as fantastical as no. Burton's other movies. No, not, it's a much really more all. straightforward, yeah. um, but it has some of his elements. Like there's a scene oh, sure. where they go into a fun house yeah, and it looks like a right, Tim Burton right, kind of yeah, fun house. Sure. Um, so he gets little avenues where he can mm-hmm. do his things in there. But mm-hmm. really, this is a movie for people who love behind the scenes information. Yeah. Who people love who like movies. People who figuring like out how movies are made. Like there's a, I love the scene where they are filming something... Uh, in the swamp, and it's all lit by car headlights. Yes. And right. Bella goes, he's like, oh, when are we going to be done? I've been waiting all day for do whatever. And he's like, we have 38 more scenes to shoot tonight, right. sir. It's just great. It's just great. There's so many great lines in that movie. Yeah. It has a very witty, mm. kind of snappy mm-hmm. pace it that does. I think is uh, along with movies of the 50s and yeah, 60s. Yeah, yeah, sure. So, yeah, terrific. I love Ed Wood. It's my number two pick. What is your... Number one. Well, before we go to number one, let's do some honorable mentions. Because he's, he's done 20 movies now. Yeah. Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice is his 20th film. And so there's a few I wanted to mention um, that I really like that just didn't quite make it. Corpse Bride, I think, is another really fun stop motion film. Yep. Johnny Depp and Helen Bonham Carter uh, do a great job in that. I actually kind of like his Alice in Wonderland movie. Okay. I think it's interesting. It, what they did with the story was really unique. And uh, just Burton's style totally fits that world. Definitely. It goes a little CG wild, sure. you know, but that's to be expected, and, you know, it's, it's fine. Um, another one, the, the one that I really had to mention that was closest to making my list was Big Eyes. Um, Big Eyes this is, is another, This is one I'm dying to see. You've got to watch it. It's another biopic. Yeah. Another true story about an artist and um, this relationship he, he has with this woman and it's really interesting, the dynamic. Christoph Waltz and uh, Amy Adams, mm-hmm. my favorite actress, are both in that together, and they just do a phenomenal job. Yeah. Uh, really, really well worth watching. Uh, it's very high on my ranking. It just didn't quite make that top five. So 
Um, those are all mine. Do you have any others that you'd like to mention? I think you covered. I think you covered okay. most of the bases here. Cool. Um, yeah, terrific. Let's just go straight into our number one now. Our number one. I think we share a number one. We probably because do. this is the one that I think neither of us have talked about. Sitting right here. It's Big Fish. Big everybody. Fish. It's got to be Big Fish. It's got to be Big Fish. Big Fish is his best movie. It's the hands down culmination. Yeah. Of his entire filmography, yep. summed up in one film, mm -hmm. and the story is so. Heartfelt yes. and emotional yes. and powerful. Definitely, it's it's another film. This movie is so interesting yeah. because it it, it ha does everything Burton does well. It has the grounded nature. Yep. Of it, even more so than Ed Wood mm -hmm. or or maybe even Big Eyes. It's very realistic story about right. a father and son. Yep. This ailing father, mm -hmm. son comes and visits him. Reconnecting. Reconnecting. Trying to reconnect. Had a falling out. Making amends. Know? And then. It has the dad telling yes, all these because, stories. Yeah, the father is a known. Fantastic he's a known way. storyteller. Yeah. So we get his perspective on all of these right. amazing things that happened to him when he was young. His perspective, from his perspective, exactly. this is how it happened. Yeah. And it's, know, it's a big, larger than life yeah. fish story. Yeah, it's you a know? big it's fish. A, a big fish story yeah. is kind of where that name comes right, from. Right, right. Ewan McGregor. Ewan is just on another level here. Terrific. He's fantastic. He's got like a southern drawl yes, yes. accent. Yeah, it all takes place like in the deep south. You so know? fun and well, Most of it was shot here in Florida. Yeah. Um, which yeah. is really cool. Um, you got Albert Finney in there. Mm -hmm. You've got Jessica Lang. Um, Danny DeVito shows of course, up. You know, of it, the whole cast is Steve Buscemi. Yeah. I mean, it's got such great actors in it all throughout. And they Such a great romantic, deliver. fantastical yes, very adventure. Romantic. Yep. romantic in the sense both that it's kind of a, a love story yeah. and also that it's just romanticized. Yes, exactly. As like this this Tight ideal reality. idealistic yeah. uh -huh. world. Uh -huh. um, so yeah, terrific. Big Fish again. It combines everything I love from mm -hmm. all of his other movies into one terrific package that yeah. is really, to, in my opinion, the last Tim Burton movie anyone should see. Because oh, it, it, yeah. it is I, I it is such mean, an yeah. ultimate film sure. for him. Yeah, I agree. It's it's also you know we talked about the effects a little bit. He he said and I listened to the commentary last night. Only three blue screen shots in the whole film. Everything's in camera. Everything's camera tricks, editing tricks, practical effects. Yeah. He wanted it to have that tangible quality. Mm -hmm. you know? um, and it's, it's sad. It's, it's sad to see that so he's good. kind of gotten away from that. But yeah. Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice. Gives me a little bit it of hope that he might return. Bit. It brought it back. There's not quite as much CG insanity going on in that film. A lot of it's practical. A lot of it's built, you know, real stuff. And, yeah, I was glad. I appreciate that about the new film as well. But, yeah, Big Fish, it, it's an all-timer, in Definitely. my opinion. It, it's one of my all-time favorite yep. movies. Yep. Beautiful, you know, again, father-son story. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it comes full circle. It, it has a satisfying conclusion. Yep. Um, so many and the strengths. way they do it. Yes, yeah. Every scene. It's like I was listening to the commentary and, and some of the, watching some of the behind the scenes, mm -hmm. and Ewan McGregor was talking about how it felt like he was making a different movie every day on right. set because right. there's so many different stories that are being told, sure. but they're all congruent and they all they build all on sense. each other. Yes, they all work and together it comes and full flow. circle in the end and in the, a way that works. Again, the editing here is so smart. Where Definitely they're going back and forth between young Ed mm -hmm. and. Uh, old Ed and, and the Sun storyline, all of it just flows perfectly. It works together. Um, yeah, th uh, there's there's no better Tim Burton movie than Big Fish. I completely agree. Yeah, it, it's great. It's a great one. So that's it for our Tim Burton ranking. Um, we've ranked every uh, all, all of our, our top five Tim Burton films. So we want to know what your top five Tim Burton movies are. There's a lot out there. We didn't mention like, Nightmare Before Christmas. Well, that's not a Tim Burton-directed film. He didn't we direct only, it. We're only counting <laughs> the films he directed. <laughs> Even though it is literally titled Tim, Tim Burton's, Burton's Nightmare Before Christmas. He worked on that for a long time. Yeah. Designed the whole thing. <laughs> I mean, it's it's his movie. He it is. It very much is. He just didn't So direct. we were only including films he directed. That one would have made probably my top five if we had included it. It probably would have made mine, too. Yeah. It's, it's a really good movie. Uh, maybe some of you are disappointed we didn't include 89 Batman. A lot of people prefer that to Batman Returns. Sure, sure. Um, there's, I'm sure, some fans of Sleepy Hollow out there. Or, Sweeney Todd. Uh, Sweeney Todd. I, yeah. That's the one I still haven't seen. I okay. Watch that one. Okay. Um, there's also, I'm sure, going to be Mars Attacks fans. Sure. You know, that film has its cult sure. following as well. He's done so many. Again, 20 movies over the past, you know, 30, 40 years. 
Um, it's hard to narrow it down to five, but um, let us know what you think of our lists. Um, make sure you, uh, again, comment with your top five Tim Burton movies. Make sure you share this on social media. Again, we've got a commentary for Beetlejuice on yep, the channel. We we've do. got a reaction to Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice. We've got a spoiler review for Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice. It's Beetlejuice mania right now. That's right. I've said it so many times, he should have appeared and disappeared at least five times. <laughs> um, so and if you're a fan of Tim Burton and you haven't seen it, watch Big Fish. Absolutely. Big Fish is the must-see um, of all these. I would highly recommend it. Um, so check it out. Let us know what you think. Uh, make sure you leave a comment down below. Again, yes. hit the like button. Hit subscribe. Hit the bell so you get notified of all our videos. And we'll see you next time right here on The, the Real, Real World. World.